For today's video, I want to talk about a concept in anti-aging skincare known as the exposome. Everything that you are exposed to throughout your lifetime from your environment that can contribute to premature skin aging, wrinkle formation, set the stage for skin cancer, damage the skin barrier, generate a lot of inflammation and oxidative stress, free radicals that can not only trigger premature skin aging, but also can flare a lot of skin conditions like acne, eczema, psoriasis. It includes tobacco, temperature, pollution, radiation from the sun, lack of sleep, stress, and your nutrition. But specifically, I want to focus on pollution and metals. When we talk about pollution, it's complicated. It's not as though you can just avoid being exposed to pollution. And there isn't actually a skincare product or ingredient that blocks pollution. Of course, there are certain products and ingredients that address what pollution does to our skin. There is nothing though that is the sunscreen equivalent for pollution. There's not a product that you know totally blocks its adherence and absorption to the skin surface, although it is an active area of growing research. Pollution is a pretty big category too. You have ozone, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide. You're exposed to pollution, sitting in traffic. Skin's the largest organ, and it's the first defense. When the skin barrier is weakened, those pollutants and harmful particulates have the potential to penetrate into your skin more deeply, cause more of an array of problems. You should appreciate the fact that the majority of skin aging is the result of our lifetime exposure to ultraviolet radiation. It damages collagen, damages DNA, damages lipids in our skin. It really destroys the framework and leads to wrinkle formation, but it also sets the stage for skin cancers later on in life. Pollution from our environment also damages the skin and the combination of ultraviolet radiation plus pollution, they are additive, they exhibit synergy in creating oxidative stress, free radicals, and ultimately inflammation that weakens the skin and leads to premature skin aging as well as skin cancers. What are some of the effects that pollution and ultraviolet radiation have on our skin? Can lead to the upregulation of something called matrix metalloproteinases. These are enzymes that destroy our collagen. The end result of that is less collagen, less supportive framework, deeper wrinkles. The skin barrier becomes compromised and is less able to protect you from the outside world and serve as a defense. There's a hastening and premature onset of the skin signs of aging. And these are not bad. I think when we think of skin aging, the automatic go-to is some kind of cosmetic effect. Premature skin aging is not a cosmetic issue. It is an organ system issue. Premature skin aging, think of it the same way you might approach premature heart aging, premature brain aging. Think of it that way. Yes, it's what everyone sees, so there's a cosmetic effect to that. The signs of premature skin aging include rough skin texture, enlarged pores, discoloration, and a tendency towards dryness. This is all a reflection of compromised barrier function and underlying damage. If you stop thinking about skin as a cosmetic organ and instead think of it as the barrier that it is and the protective shield, then you can really start to hone the conversation around anti-aging to be more focused on health, skin health, and longevity of function rather than simply cosmetics. Nothing wrong with caring about cosmetics, but I do think people can become preoccupied with the cosmetic aspect and it can negatively impact your, your mental health to be so focused on the cosmetic things, especially if you are seeking approval from other people. That's not what this is about. It's really just about prioritizing the health of your largest organ system. And again, a testament to that is the fact that these changes in the skin from oxidative stress, reactive oxygen species, it flares a lot of skin conditions, acne, eczema, psoriasis, even hair loss is associated with some of the things that we're talking about in today's video. Again, there's not a product out there that is the sunscreen equivalent for pollution, but there certainly are rational approaches and things that are being developed in the pipeline that may address this moving forward and things you're likely already incorporating in your routine as you'll see towards the end of the video that do in fact help mitigate some of these damaging effects. Let's start with ozone. Ozone is not able to penetrate the skin. It reacts with the stratum corneum, the outer protective shell. It's there in these upper layers of the skin that ozone induces oxidative stress by way of lipid peroxidation. Think about the skin barrier and the stratum corneum. There are a lot of lipids there. Lipids are really important for barrier function. They get damaged by this ox oxidative stress. It's happening up there in the very top layers when we're talking about ozone. You also have particulate matter, which likewise can generate oxidative stress and lipid peroxidation. Studies examining the effects of particulate matter on the skin show an increased association with more prominent signs of skin aging related to the concentrations of particulate matter that people are exposed to, 
as well as an association with more aggravated disease states like acne, eczema, more prominent signs of skin aging in the form of discoloration, wrinkles, and keratoses. But in contrast to ozone, the mechanism with particulate matter is suggested to be perhaps that it enters the skin and penetrates through the hair follicle, through your pores. Or the other idea is that the skin doesn't necessarily absorb the entire particle of the particulate matter, but rather things are released from the particle into the skin. Aromatic compounds that are lipid soluble and can penetrate into the skin. The outer lipids are oxidized. This is the starting point of a cascade that can damage your skin. Compounds that are part of this cascade act as second messengers for subsequent inflammation. They're able to attach to proteins, change the conformation, and change the functionality of proteins in your skin. All of this lipid peroxidation is driven by metals. From your high school chemistry class, you may recall something known as the Fenton reaction, whereby iron can react with hydrogen peroxide to produce reactive oxygen species, specifically a hydroxyl radical. The hydroxyl radical is one of the most reactive species. It can very quickly react with lipids in the skin to cause lipid peroxidation. The goal with certain skincare ingredients, which we'll talk about later, is that if we can prevent the effects of metals on catalyzing reactions that lead to reactive oxygen species, then we can prevent peroxidation. And therefore, we won't accumulate those second messengers that drive damage to proteins in the skin and inflammation. It's important to remember, it's not just pollution by itself. Ultraviolet radiation from the sun plus pollution, they're additive and they exhibit synergy. So skincare and lifestyle modifications should focus on minimizing the effects of both of these exposures. Nothing illustrates to us the damaging effects of pollution on the skin more strikingly than smoker's face. Smoking cigarettes is basically like walking around with a stick blowing pollution in your face into your lungs. Carbon monoxide, many of these harmful compounds, people who smoke have more severe and more early onset signs of skin aging. And again, I want to emphasize, it's not about looking young for cosmetic reasons. It's about saying, hey, the organ system has been put into overdrive. Ultimately, that's going to weaken its function. These signs with smoker's face include more prominent, deeper wrinkles, yellowing of the skin with an almost sallow appearance, more obvious bony contours, enlarged pores due to destruction of the supportive collagen framework around the pore opening. Smoking is also really strongly associated with a wide variety of skin diseases, and these skin diseases are a lot more severe and more stubborn to treat and control in people who smoke. Acne, eczema, psoriasis, hydradenitis superativa. When you smoke and you expose the skin and your body to all this pollution, it generates so much inflammation into your body, driving a lot of skin problems. When you think about oxidative stress and inflammation, it's hard to know which one comes first. It's sort of a chicken or egg scenario. Is it the oxidative stress that comes first and drives inflammation or does inflammation, which we know drives more oxidative stress? So which one comes first? Suffice it to say, both inflammation and oxidative stress exhibit positive feedback on one another. So where do we go from here in terms of our skincare routine and skincare practices? First and foremost, focus on protecting your skin barrier. When the skin barrier is weakened, that leads to greater accessibility of pollutants as well as different infections. All of this can result in more inflammation. Interestingly, there is a class of compounds known as metal chelators, and I'll give you some examples of those later, but metal chelators applied to the skin may have a, a beneficial role in blocking upstream the whole effect of metals on kicking off the cascade of lipid peroxidation. I wanna to talk to you about a study that examined the effects of applying a mixture of antioxidants and a chelator deferoxamine onto the skin. When you expose the skin to diesel fuel exhaust, this results in an increase in lipid peroxidation. This study showed that applying that mixture of chelator plus antioxidant to the skin could actually prevent the lipid peroxidation upon exposure to diesel exhaust. Metal chelators and antioxidants have parallel but different effects. Antioxidants help to reduce reactive oxygen species, whereas a metal chelator is gonna work all the way upstream to block the effects of metals on catalyzing these reactions that lead to the formation of free radicals. Again, when the skin barrier is altered, it's more vulnerable. When we wanna look at the skin barrier, we can look at filaggrin, which is part of the barrier, a lipid naturally found there. Skin exposed to diesel exhaust will show a decrease in filaggrin, but in the study, if the skin was treated with uh, that mixture of antioxidant plus chelator, well, those effects were prevented. Ultimately, this suggests that this mixture may be helpful for ensuring good barrier function in the face of environmental stressors like pollution. Exposure to diesel exhaust also will induce that enzyme matrix metalloproteinase 9 that can chew up your collagen. So you get upregulation of the enzyme, you get a decrease in collagen. 
but if the skin was pre-treated with that antioxidant plus chelator mixture, well, that was much less. Now this research is in, it's still in its infancy. Does everyone need to be using an antioxidant plus chelator? What are the long-term consequences of doing that? These are questions we don't have clinical studies to adequately address. More research is needed, but suffice it to say, this appears to be a, an interesting and possible avenue to protect the skin from the damaging effects of pollution and various other environmental stressors that function to lead to lipid peroxidation in the skin and subsequent reactive oxygen species generation. So deferoxamine is the metal chelator that is used in this, but are there any other chelators out there? Yes. Chelators are found in a lot of botanic ingredients that you might already be using. So don't worry, you probably don't even need to think about this that much further other than to pat yourself on the back if something like this is included and say, hey, maybe it's doing this. You've got kojic acid. Kojic acid is a ingredient used to treat hyperpigmentation. It's a copper chelator. Copper is important for the function of the enzyme tyrosinase that makes pigment. By competing with that, you put the brakes on abnormal pigment production, you can get a lightening of discoloration. But it may also help in functioning to block the effects of metals on generating lipid peroxidation. And the subsequent inflammation that would occur from that can further drive hyperpigmentation. So that may be another mechanism by which kojic acid works to treat dark spots and hyperpigmentation. Polyphenols and flavanols and botanic ingredients like centella, for example, an ingredient we talk about a lot on this channel, may also function to chelate these metals. The compound phytic acid, it, it's a very mild exfoliant, but it chelates metals and can help in blocking the effects of metals in the skin in terms of generating lipid peroxidation and subsequent downstream mediators that drive inflammation and damage to the proteins in our skin. And then chlorogenic acid is naturally present in a lot of botanic compounds and may likewise help in chelating metals. So chelating ingredients in skincare are beneficial in that they're thought to prevent peroxidation. And again, that cascade after peroxidation is subsequently inflammatory and damaging. But another benefit of these compounds is they activate endogenous antioxidant systems like glutathione peroxidase and catalase. And this is going to be helpful for preventing reactive oxygen species. I mentioned that ultraviolet radiation from the sun and pollution, they have synergistic effects. They, they work together to damage our skin. Ultraviolet radiation can trigger the release of iron from cells. And that iron is then going to be used to kick off the damaging effects of pollution on our skin. So UV can exacerbate the effects of pollution on the skin. Thinking, taking a step back and thinking of this, within your skin, you have your skin's own natural defense systems. And then you can complement those with topical antioxidants, examples of which include vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A, retinol, niacinamide, coenzyme Q10, caffeic acid, which is found in caffeine. And then chelating agents, kojic acid, phytic acid, to name a few. Antioxidants are also anti-inflammatory as well. So not only do they help with reactive oxygen species, but they also calm down inflammation. So for this reason, they um, can be helpful for inflammatory skin conditions that are flared up by exposure to both UV and pollution, things like acne, eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, hydradenitis suppurativa, psoriasis, even some types of hair loss. So do you need to change up your skincare routine based on the information in this video? No. Recently, I did a video on having a skincare reset, going back to basics of a cleanser, a moisturizer, and a sunscreen. Guess what? Those three basics are gonna help you out with regards to the impact of these environmental stressors on your skin. Cleansing is very important, and I always encourage you to do it at the end of the day. The goal is to remove, of course, cosmetic residue, sebum, things that can be inflammatory, but also potentially you're removing any particulate matter that may have settled on the skin surface within the pore that could otherwise be seriously damaging. Then you have your moisturizer and your moisturizing sunscreen. Moisturizer you're gonna use at night, and moisturizing sunscreen during the day. Moisturizers and the moisturizing properties of sunscreen help you out in that they help the skin barrier. They do this by helping to improve the moisture content of the skin. Ultimately, the enzymes and things that go about to work to make barrier function top notch work better when they're, the moisture content is better. Moisturizing ingredients help to reduce water loss from the skin. And ultimately, that's going to be beneficial for keeping irritating stuff like pollutants out. When the skin barrier is compromised, the skin is a lot more prone to irritation and inflammation that can further drive a variety of skin problems. And in the face of pollution and ultraviolet radiation, it really can be quite, quite a doozy on your skin. And then of course, with the moisturizing sunscreen, the active ingredients in the sunscreen, zinc, titanium dioxide, or any number of chemical UV filters that are used in sunscreens like avobenzone, octinoxate, these are gonna help protect your skin from ultraviolet radiation. It's my belief that anti 
antioxidants and chelators certainly appear to be beneficial in a skincare routine, but definitely more research is needed to know the best combination, the best dosages, how best to apply, and all of those sorts of questions. At any rate, they appear to be well tolerated. If you guys have watched me in my skincare routine in my vlogs, you know that I use an antioxidant serum in the morning with coenzyme Q10. I, of course, always wear sunscreen. That is without question very important for your skin health and for protecting you from these environmental stressors. I also incorporate the antioxidant niacinamide in moisturizers. A lot of my sunscreens have vitamin E and or vitamin C. I also have been using a kojic acid serum from Maylove, the fadeaway brightening serum. It also has a variety of antioxidants and botanic compounds that may act as, as uh, metal chelators. Suffice it to say, I'm a huge advocate for just keeping your skincare routine very basic, cleanser, moisturizer, and sunscreen. As boring as it sounds, a very basic skincare routine of cleanser, moisturizer, and sunscreen supports skin health. And hopefully as you have learned from this video, how different environmental stressors can challenge our skin, challenge our skin barrier, set us up for premature skin aging, damage to skin structures, and ultimately that can set the stage long-term for, for skin cancers. Hopefully you, you've come to learn in this video that just the basics of a skincare routine can help support that and being aware of our exposures. Don't smoke, whatever you do. You can't avoid pollution. There's no solid evidence-based way to address the impact of pollution on the skin, but antioxidants and chelating ingredients in many anti-aging products may address these things. By blocking lipid peroxidation and reactive oxygen species, antioxidants and chelating ingredients may help in addressing how pollution ages our skin. Without a doubt, sunscreen is the most proactive thing that you can do in terms of products that you use to protect your skin because it's going to protect those UV rays, which again, exhibit synergy with the damaging effects of pollution. I'm a big advocate of keeping a very basic skincare routine. Another benefit of that is when it comes to products, the more things you try and introduce, it gets very complicated. You increase the likelihood that you might actually become irritated by one of these products. And when you have irritation in the skin, guess what? That compromises barrier function, which no one wants. So I think by keeping it simple and practical and focused on the basics, it's more sustainable for you. It's more affordable in most cases, and it's practical. And I'm a big fan of those things. Speaking of which, on the end slate, I'm going to link that video on a skincare reset in case you need a reminder or you missed that one, definitely check it out next. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.